<laughs> hey guys, it's uh, Pastor Kevin and Miss Ann. We are here on Monday night. Uh, it is, um, I gotta go that way. It is the, uh, what day is that? The 11th day of May. And so we are here for our coffee and dessert devotion. Uh, good to see you, Sandy. Hi, Marlon. Good to see you tonight. The 11th day. <laughs> Trying to get situated Hi, here Kathy. with technology tonight. Not, uh, Hi, Scott. Yeah. So anyway, Scott Hood. Hey, Scott. Good to see you tonight. Hi, Karen. Thank you for the uh, good info about David. And uh, boy, I tell you what, good news. Good news. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, when he gets... Uh, when they come back over, I definitely want him to come and share a testimony to the church about the things that are going on in that ministry, because that is fantastic. You know what? I might actually call him and do a Zoom interview with him, oh, just that so that really we can get the uh, testimony about what's going on with that ministry he's doing. So that'd be awesome. Hey, Jessica, good to see you tonight. Hi, Kay. So uh, tonight, go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to be in uh, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalm, chapter 84. So go ahead and get your Bibles, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Tonight, uh, just coffee and dessert. I have my coffee mug. It's a travel mug, and it's from NAM, uh, and uh, it's North American Mission Board. For those of you that don't know what NAM stands for, and it's for the Send Network. I don't know if you can see this, but it's really cool. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, see, it's a Send Network, and this is uh, one of the three phases of ministry that NAM does. They do um, the Send Network the Hope Network, and the yeah. Compassion Ministries Network. And so these I are the things that they're engaged in. Uh, they sent this out to the pastors that are involved in uh, the Florida Sin Network. And so right. that's kind of cool because of our tithes and offerings. Because of your faithfulness and your tithes and offerings, we're able to participate in uh, the church planning uh, movement uh, that is afoot in Florida. And so that is a great work to be involved in. And so my dessert tonight, I just want to show you, what are you guys having for dessert? Go ahead and put it in the column box, what you guys are having. I'm having, now I'm going to have to get a big spoon for this. I forgot to get a spoon. Okay. This is a lemon chiffon blueberry dessert. And so I'm just going to open it and smell it, okay? And isn't that weird to smell your, your food and all? I don't know. Maybe that's just, uh, maybe that's just me. I know you guys do it too. You just don't admit it. <laughs> right? Oh, and apparently, uh, thank you for the, for the Ragers. Uh, for your contribution again this week. You are storing up treasures in heaven with all of the desserts that you're making. And so um, this is a... Oh, it does smell very good. I'm going to have to go get it. Maybe I don't even need a spoon. I can just kind of down it like no, this. You know? It's got a graham cracker crust to it, by the way, is what uh, Trish told me. So I cannot wait to dig into that in just a few minutes. So uh, lots of stuff going on this week. I hope you guys had a good day. Hope you had a good weekend as we... Uh, we're in the parking lot again. I'm not going to eat this. I, I got to put that down. I'm going to eat it right now. Well, okay. he had that and they brought me a delicious fruit. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. And then they brought like me this the fancy, dancy. Yeah, it's got rice cakes with blackberry and it looks like maybe cream cheese. I think it's cream cheese, yeah. Yeah, doesn't that look good? Yep. Ooh. So, hey, so, yeah, the, I'm <laughs> losing all the some of these guys fruit. got the too. Hi, Carol. Good to see you tonight. I'm going to keep eating your fruit. You better put it away from me. All right. There you go. All right. Uh, Psalms chapter 84 is our text tonight. Um, a very a good message tonight. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I listen to several different preachers. And so I know that some of you guys do too. Uh, one of the uh, pastoral networks that I listen to is from the uh, National Community Church, which is in the town that I grew up in, in Washington, D.C. And so that town, uh, there's a, a group of pastors that make up the National Elevation. Community Church. And uh, no, that, not Elevation, that was uh, Stephen Furtick. Oh, okay. This is uh, Pastor Mark uh, Batterson, who wrote The Circle Maker, for some of you who know uh, that book. And so uh, they have a preaching rotation, and they were going through a sermon series uh, called The Valleys. And so it's kind of uh, timely uh, from what we're going through. And I heard this, uh, and I've been reading through Psalms and taking a look at some things that we might talk about tonight. And then they talked about this one, uh, where their executive pastor, Joel Schmigdal, uh, covered this uh, idea, the Valley of Baca. And I don't know if you guys know the Valley of Baca or have heard this before. And so uh, it's an awesome, Johnson said something about Weight Watchers cream cheese or something. No, so I, I don't know. Glasses, yeah. Either. Well, that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll read for you. <laughs> he said, don't eat it. It's too, it's, give it to Kevin. That's what it said. It said, give it to Kevin. Don't eat your dessert. Oh, really? <laughs> no. He loves it. 
Hi mom, good to see you tonight, glad you're here. So I'll call you afterward, I saw that I missed you a call, so I'll call you after we're done, okay? All right, nothing like taking care of a little personal business on the, on the devotion night, right? Okay, so uh, anyway, this is a devotion that uh, I heard, or a sermon that I heard, and I thought it would be great to share it with you guys, because uh, I think it applies perfectly to what we're going through, the season we're in, and the season that we're coming out of. It's the season that we're coming out of. I don't know about you guys, I want to, uh, hey Ryan, good to see you tonight. I don't know about you guys, I want to pray for each of you. I want to pray for some of our church members who are starting to re-engage different uh, populations. Uh, I've been on the phone a couple of times today and there are some people who are in need of some encouragement tonight. As people kind of come out of their shell and come out of this uh, funk that we've been in for the last two months, sometimes uh, we need to uh, be intentional about being nice about being nice to one another. And so as we see each other in the uh, stores or at work or in person again, we need to uh, not let all of our frustrations out on the person that we're engaging. And so some of that is what we were uh, kind of experiencing today, not me, myself and I, but uh, some of the people that I talked to. And so I prayed with a few people today and talked to a few people uh, about uh, that problem. And so we're gonna, we're gonna see a lot of that in the in the days ahead and so we need to be prepared for it we need to be expecting it we need to try to uh work through that even before we get there hey joe hey mary good to see you tonight okay psalms 84 if you have your bibles go ahead and turn your bibles to psalms chapter 84 uh everybody go ahead and put uh, down your uh, uh desserts that you're having tonight uh, the coffee. Did you show them your coffee cup? I know you've had. Oh, this before. is like my one of my favorites. Yeah. See how big that thing is. Right. It's a good size, but I love it. And you know what? When it's so pretty like this, you enjoy it. Do you all enjoy your your coffee or tea in a beautiful cup? I okay. bet you do. Okay. I, I bet you say do. So. <laughs> Just tastes so much better. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. So hey, Linda. Good to see you tonight, Linda Buckles, Linda Wolfson. Uh, glad you guys are here tonight. Psalms 84, uh, and I want to read just the first seven verses, and then we'll jump into uh, some things about these verses, but we're talking about the Valley of Baca, the Valley of Baca, and so Psalms chapter 84. But let's do this. Before we, uh, before we jump into the devotion tonight, let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. So pray with me. Father, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity to gather under your word. Lord, we thank you that we can uh, gather with friends and family, even on the internet. Even though we can't be together uh, yet, it's coming soon. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but Lord, uh, even in the midst of this season and coming out of this season, help us to, help us to exercise patience and help us to exercise uh, civility with one another. Help us to be with one another and not against one another. Lord, I pray that you give us uh, the wisdom and the encouragement uh, in our relationships with one another to continue to keep on keeping on while we're in this valley. And as we look for the days ahead that we're coming out, Lord, that all that you would get all glory and honor and praise for everything that happens. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, so Psalms chapter 84, you have uh, that with you. Um, Psalms chapter 84 in your Bibles. Here's how what it says. It's a psalm of the sons of Korah. They were, they were song leaders and uh, choir directors, right? And so uh, Psalms chapter 84 begins, how lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. The bird also has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How blessed are those who dwell in your house, amen. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you how now this is where uh, I want to spend most of our time verses five to seven how blessed is the man whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion I love how the New American Standard says that whose hearts are the highways to Zion passing through the valley of Baca they make it a spring the early rain also covers it with blessings and they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appear before God in Zion. And so this idea of the Valley of Baca in chapter 84 of the book of Psalms is this idea. Baca gets its name from the balsam tree in Israel, the balsam tree. 
Uh, it's in the wilderness. It's in the desert place, and it's in a. Uh, it's it's really a. It's it's a dry place. But here's the thing: is that to get to Jerusalem, to get to Jerusalem, they would have to go through a dry and desert place. You already know where this is going, don't you? And so as uh, this word baka means weeping. Thank you, Kay. It means weeping. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And so this is the valley of weeping or the valley of lamentation. Okay? And so all Jewish families back then would have to pilgrim through the valley of Baca as they moved into or moved up to Jerusalem. And so this psalm is a psalm of ascent. A psalm of ascent. And that means that they sang it as they went up toward Jerusalem. As they made their ways from their houses, from their villages, and they made their way up to Jerusalem. And as they made their way up to Jerusalem, they would sing psalms of ascent. And this would be one of them. As they looked forward to the place where they were going, the, the temple of the Lord, right? Uh, the, the house of the Lord, as the New American Standard uh, calls it. And so... As they kept their eyes on the prize, eyes in the distance, eyes where they were going, they had to pass through the valley of weeping or the valley of lamentation, this dry and desert place. And so to get their minds off of the difficulties of the travel, of the struggles of where they were going, they would sing these songs to continue to get them to where they were going. I'll give you a little secret. Um, in our walks every morning, we, we start to walk, what we're walking two miles, mm -hmm. right, every morning. And so what we've started to do is to listen uh, either to a podcast or to uh, some worship. And so what that does is it gets our minds kind of off of us and on to the Lord. And so this is what they were doing. The same exact thing that we are doing today with our electronic devices and uh, focusing, kind of getting our eyes off ourselves and getting to a headspace with the Lord. Uh, that's what they did is they sang songs together as they would march toward Jerusalem. And it wasn't an easy trip. It was not an easy trip. They had families. They had caravans that were going. I mean, this took planning and this took preparation. Uh, this was a long and arduous journey. And so even before they got to the Valley of Weeping, even before they got to the Valley of Baca, they were out of breath. They were out of strength. They, were, they, they needed to rest. I mean, this was a long journey. Many of them, this pilgrimage that they would take to Jerusalem, and most of them would go three times a year for the Jewish feasts up to the up to the temple. And so this is a, a song that means a lot to the Jewish people, but we can look at this and understand as they were traveling into and through the Valley of Baca, we can take some of the principles in five through seven and apply it to our lives today. Mm -hmm. And so think about this. Um, we all want to get to Zion, right? We all want to get to Jerusalem. We all want to get to our destination. But in the midst of that, we have to recognize in order to get to the destination that God has planned and prepared for us, we have to go through the valley of Baca. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the valley of weeping. We have to go through the, uh, this dry and desert place. Because if something happens in this dry and desert place for you and I. And for the way that we walk with the Lord, our faith is encouraged and strengthened. Something happens to us and in us in the valley of Baca. Now, we can all kind of relate the valley of Baca to the coronavirus, right? The season of isolation and separation that we've all been going through in different ways. Uh, this season that the globe has experienced together is a, kind of a valley of Baca in, in a way. And so we all want to get to Zion, but we don't want to go through Baca, right? Can I get an amen there? <laughs> right? We don't, want to, we don't want to sign up for that. We want to get up to the mountaintop, but we don't want to go through the valley to get there. But that's the only way there, right? Uh, we, we want to get to a place of hope, but we don't want to reach that place of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. we, we want to get to a place of faith, but in order to get there, we have to go a se through a season of testing and trial and temptation. We have to go through a season where our faith is going to be tested and proven. We looked at that last week in Abraham's life. This idea that you know, we want these things, these fruit of our faith, we want these good things to happen, these mountaintop experiences... But we fail to recognize that we don't get there unless we go through the valley first. Unless we go through the valley first. That's where our strength is built. And so, a couple, three things, just to answer your question. How do we get, how do we get through Baca? How do we get through Baca? Well, if you look at verse 5, go ahead and look down at verse 5. Okay, and verse 5 again says, How blessed is the man whose strength is in you. And so we must strengthen ourselves in the Lord, Right? We must strengthen ourselves in the Lord. So how do we do that? What do we do to strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Well, the Bible doesn't leave us 
to wonder about this, right? Uh, it's the word of the Lord. It's prayer. It's his presence in us and around us through the people that he puts into our lives. These are the ways that God strengthens us and we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And so, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, uh, this psalm says. And this is the song that they were singing. This, this word for strengthen or strength uh, is the word, believe it or not, Oz. And so the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Strength, it's Oz. And so it means strong and power, mighty, boldness. But, but it comes from the root word, which I think is very telling. It's from the root word for prevail. For prevail. Mm -hmm. And so what the, the song says is that blessed, who's, blessed is a man whose strength is in the Lord. It's in the strength that prevails through the valley. And so those who are blessed, they walk through, they continue to, to go through as they strengthen themselves in the Lord. They find a blessing in that as they prevail in that season. Exodus 16 is a, is a great song of Moses. And as they crossed the Red Sea and they came through, God delivered them. Moses writes a song and he talks about the Lord is my strength, my defense, and my salvation. And these are the things that we celebrate and we recognize God's role in our lives. Isaiah 40, you, you want the verse in Isaiah, right? Uh, Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Great, great song, right? A great, great uh, uh, verse uh, to memorize. Isaiah 41, this word wait means to attach yourself or to tie oneself to the Lord. So those who wait upon the Lord are actually attached to Him. They're bound to Him. That's really what it means to be strengthen in the Lord. We're bound to the Lord and His strength becomes our strength. That we're waiting on Him. They're waiting with Him. That we're waiting through in Him. This is what it means to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. You know, uh, this idea of bounding or binding for... Honey, I'm going to tell on you. This idea of binding for strength, right? Uh, we have a resident uh, expert in the group uh, uh, with a green thumb, right? The Ragers, right? And so the Ragers are, they're just such giving people. So uh, we have shared with them how in our household it's very difficult to grow anything, right? Because, well, it just doesn't do that here as far as plants are concerned. And so they bring over a tomato plant. Thank you, Jonathan. And he brings over a tomato plant and he's got this wire uh, cage or this wire support structure around it so that as the tomato plant grows it'll attach itself the vines and grow around uh, the wire support structure right and as it does then it will continue to be strengthened to be fed and these great big tomatoes will be coming off of it right well unfortunately you know uh, the, the tomato plant the theory is correct that the tomato plant binds itself or wraps itself ties itself around the wire support structure and in that it finds strength except in the Lauder household, right? Now, uh, do a footnote to the story, right? Uh, Jonathan actually had a tomato plant that didn't make it either. And so we're thinking that these tomato plants were, fault, were uh, uh, well, they just, they were faulty, right? So we're not going to take blame for that one. So uh, y'all pray for these uh, plants but that are But then he was so here. kind and they brought me a cactus <laughs> and he said I couldn't kill it. So it's still alive back there. It is temporarily alive. Yes, it is. Yeah. The cat I just is, won't talk to it. Yeah. So anyway, this idea of being bound or, or tied to, uh, you can understand in different places that we, we, we tie things to structures in order to provide strength for it. Uh, and Jesus is our strength, right? Would you say, man, give me a thumbs up. Jesus is our Amen. strength. Amen. Well, in John chapter 15, it's, Jesus gives us the uh, this metaphor, the vine and the branches. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And as long as you're attached to me, as long as you're bound to me, you're going to have strength. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to multiply. You're going to have fruit that is evident in your lives. But man, if you get unattached to me, your lives become weak. They become, well, useless. Right. And the branch falls off. It dies. It falls off in the ground. It's good for nothing except to be burned in the fire. And so this idea that as we stay as we're in the valley, we stay attached to Jesus. We stay attached to the Lord. The worst thing we could do is to put our Bibles away and turn on the TV. The worst thing we could do is to listen to the news, a steady diet of, of the news and all the bad news that they're giving. Because by the way, they're not allowed to give you good news. Their job is to promote bad news. Their job is to promote those things that are going to scare you because it makes you come back. It's a psychological thing, right? 
We must be psycho in order to continue to listen to the news. But we need to pick up our Bibles and read the words of Scripture that are encouraging us, staying tied to the source of our strength. So to get through the Valley of Baca, number one, we strengthen ourselves in the Lord, right? We strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Number two, we have to know our destination. We have to know and remember our destination. Uh, the, the, end of chapter, the end of verse 5 says, In whose heart are the highways to Zion. We have to know where we're going. We have to know the direction that we're headed. We have to be tied to the person who is guiding us, the Lord. But we have to know the mission. We have to know uh, the, the vision that he has, the purpose and destiny that he has for our lives. If we're not sure where he's taking us, if we're not sure where the destination is, then quite honestly, we're going to fail in the, in the valley. We're not going to make it through the valley. We've got to keep our eyes on the prize, right? It's a runner. Hebrews talks about it. Keep our eye on the prize, the prize that is set before us, right? The glory of God. And as we do, we understand and recognize that as we go through the valleys, there's a purpose and a plan that's happening in the midst of the valley. That we're not alone, that he's with us every step of the way, but he's working out his will and his way in our lives. And so we've got to keep our eyes on the prize. Where, was, where were they going? Were the people that were singing this song, they were going to the temple, the temple of the Lord. They were going to worship the Lord. They were going to Zion. So remember, verses 1 through 4. Oh, how lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. That's where they were going, right? They were going to the temple court. They were going to the courts of the Lord. Verse uh, 3 says, The bird also has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And so they continue to remind themselves of their destination. In the midst of the dry and, and desert place. In this valley of weeping and lamentation. In our valley of weeping and lamentation. We've got to continue to remind ourselves that this is not the destination. This is the journey to get to the destination. Right? And so Baca is the place. Where, it's not where I'm going to. It is what I'm going through. Right? Does that make sense? Baca is not the place that I'm going to. It's the place that I'm traveling through. We have to continue to remind ourselves of this or we'll get bogged down in Baca. We won't move past it. We won't be, we won't be progressing on our journey. But here's what happens, quite honestly. Here's what happens. The enemy tells us that this is the destination. The enemy lies to us and says, you'll never get out of here. It'll never get any better than this. That this is the end of the road. This is what following God looks like. You're in for it for the rest of your life. Is this really what you want? And so the enemy continues to lie and stack up uh, falsities and accusations and just continues to deceive us to think that it's not going to get any better than this. And I've got to tell you, oh, it's going to get better than this. It's going to get better than this. And so as we think about these things, we have, a, we have to look at and understand where, the, where we're going so that we understand that this ain't where we're going. This is where we're traveling through. And so I think, I think there's anything that I can go through for a temporary period of time, as long as I know where I'm going and that this is how I need to get there, right? Mm -hmm. I, I used to remember that uh, you know, there would be some times and uh, different situations and circumstances that we had to go through that as we think about a trip, a journey, right? And so we like to go over to Fort Wilderness and, and Disney, uh, campground, oh, right? Yes. Yes. And so, but what are what are some of the things that we have to go through to get there, right? I mean, it it's it's not a dry and desert place in I four, but let me tell you, it's not a fun place to drive, right? I right? four, I'm not going to camp on I four. Well, sometimes you feel like it because we're parking. <laughs> it's not the destination. So it, I know where I'm going, and I continue to keep my eye on the destination. I'll go through what I have to do to get there, mm -hmm. right? You understand what I'm saying? Those of you who are going through treatments or going through surgery or going through different, a season of healing, you understand that this isn't the destination. This is something that you have to go through to get there. And so you go through the treatments. You go through the regimen. You go through what the doctors tell you to do. You, go, you take the prescriptions that they tell you to take because it's not about the destination. I mean, it's not about the journey. It's about the destination. You want to get back to a place of health. And so we keep our eyes on the prize. And this is what we do in the dry and desert place. Look, we're not going to be in the season forever. I know it seems like it's day 6,010 of isolation, right, of this coronavirus thing. But 
This is just part of the journey. We're going to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. God is taking us through. We're going to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. We just have to keep our eye on the prize, our eye on the destination, our eye on the glory of God. And guess what? God has promised us that he's here mm -hmm. every step of the way. Bonus, right? Bonus. And so here's the thing that you need to think about. What is your purpose? What is your destiny? What is the mission that he's called us to? And when we keep our eye on that, we'll, we can go through some of the challenges to get there. To get there. So... Uh, number one was strengthen yourself in the Lord. Number two was know your destination. Number three, dig a well. Dig a well. I think this one's a funny one. Uh, dig a well. Uh, in verse uh, uh, six, it says, Passing through the valley of weeping, or valley of Baca, they make it a spring. They make it a spring. The early rain also covers it with blessings. And so think about this. Just as This is a practical verse. Very practical. Okay, so we're going, we're setting off on this long journey, right? We've got to go to Jerusalem, and it's up there. It's way over there. And so we've got to walk through this wilderness, this dry and desert land. We're going to get thirsty. We're going to get thirsty. And so very practically, they would stop and they would dig a well, right? They would dig a well so they could have water for the people, water for the caravan. So this is what it's saying, that they have to dig a well. And even in the midst of that, God would show up, and it would rain in the spring. It would provide pools of water. And this, this idea they, that it, the early rain also covers it with blessings. Your, your translation may see pools. It is translated blessings. And so when you go to Israel, Kay and Reed can can attest to this, they look at rain, rainfall, as a blessing from the Lord. They do. It's a blessing from the Lord. And so anytime it rains, they're not, they're not like us whining about it raining outside. I don't get to see the sunshine today. They're looking and praising God for the rain because it's a blessing that comes from God. It's a fulfillment of a promise. And so when it rained on Mother's Day yesterday, you know, we, we thank the Lord for the rain. He's answering our prayers. It was a blessing. Our grass is a little greener today. There's a little more life in the world today because of the rain that came and visited us. And so this idea of digging a well, uh, we need to make it a place of strength. They're thirsty because they're traveling through Baca. Now, guess what? What does it mean to get thirsty? Have you ever, have you, when's the last time you were thirsty? Really? When's the last time that you were thirsty? I mean, thirsty, we, we can just go to the tap, right, and put on the water and drink or make a cup of coffee. We're, we're not, we don't understand thirst mm -hmm. like they did in biblical times. We don't understand what it means to really be thirsty and dry and, unless we think about it from a spiritual standpoint. In the valley, as we're walking through the valleys of life, as we're walking through the challenges and the turmoil and the frustration, the trials of life, as we're walking through those things, mm -hmm. man, we can get thirsty for God. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Guess what? We're supposed to get thirsty for God. This is what the valley is for. And so our thirst for God would increase and that he would be able to come and quench that thirst. That's what the valley's for. And so when we recognize that, we recognize and make opportunities that in this space and in this valley, we'll, we'll dig some wells. We'll get to work. We'll allow for opportunities for God to come and to fill us up, to fill our need. How do we do that? Well, we do that through different things, right? We do that from the Word of God. We do it from worship and praise. We do it through prayer. And so these things fill us up. And as they fill us up, we experience the presence of God and the sustenance of God in the midst of the valley. Mm -hmm. So we dig wells. We purposely go to work at growing our faith. We purposely growing, go to work at getting stronger in the Lord. Make sense? Make sense? So uh, this, this gives us an idea of problem solving, right? And so they were going through the valley and they, got, they were thirsty, so they had to solve a problem. They had to look around, where's a good place to dig a well? And they had to go to work and dig the well. Well, as we're walking through this valley, there are certain things in our lives that are real needs that are coming up and popping up. And there's different things that are happening in life. And, you know, we need to go to work. We need to identify and recognize. It. Are we thirsty in our spirit? Do we need to go and sing more songs? Do we need to fill ourselves up with praise and worship? Do we need to fill ourselves up with, with that prayer and that communication to God? Do we need to fill ourselves up? Now, I know a lot of us are thirsty right now for the family of God, for the community of God, right? We're thirsty for that. We understand that. But there are ways, even in the midst of the season we're in, even in the midst of the Valley of Baca, there are ways that we can fill ourselves up in this way. 
Many of you have said, complimented, or commented on Linda Buckle's uh, encouragement uh, from last Friday, her encouragement video. These are ways that we can continue to feed our souls and continue to quench that thirst of God in our lives, even in the midst of this dry and desert land that we're going through. I, I would encourage you to go back and look at that uh, video uh, from Linda. She did a great job on that encouragement, and I hope that you'll avail yourself of that. You can go back on the Facebook and scroll down. That was from last Friday. Here's another one. I want you to write this down, okay? Write this down. Get your pen. Write this down. It's a song. It's a song called Sea of Victory by Elevation. Uh, Elevation Worship. Sea of Victory. Okay? Make sure to go write that down. I want you to go to YouTube when we're done. And I want you to look at this song. I want you to look up the lyrics. And I want you to just worship with this song. Here's one of the things that we... This One of the lyrics of the song says, I know how this story ends. I know how this story ends. You know, if we continue to remind ourselves that we know what the destination looks like, we know where the story ends, that we'll work to get to that point, that we'll continue to feed ourselves, we'll continue to find uh, water in this dry land, the living water of Jesus Christ. We'll continue to march through and we continue to remind ourselves and strengthen ourselves in the Lord. The last verse here I want to cover is verse 7. It says, from strength to strength, right? Strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. What does it mean to go from strength from strength? You ever think about that? That's a neat phrase, isn't it? Strength from strength. As we get stronger in Baca, as we get stronger in Baca, well, then the next time we go through Baca, we're stronger than we were this time. Mm -hmm. And so we go from strength to strength that this trial and going through this trial will make us stronger for the next trial. Are you with me? And so as we get stronger in our faith for the next trial, then the next trial we go through and that strength, then we're going to build on that and get stronger for the trial after that. Because guess what? We're going to have trials. We're going to have trials. We don't, we don't get out of them. That's what life's all about as we go through the trials. But in the trial is when our faith is strengthened. As we grow our faith in Baca, we will have stronger faith the next time we're in Baca. Literally, it's an opportunity to opportunity to opportunity to grow our faith. And here's the thing, we grow our faith in the valley of weeping. We try to struggle to get out of that valley. We, we struggle not to go into that valley, not to enter that, but we fight against it. We really do. But only when we go through the valley of weeping, only when we go through the valley of Baca, can we get to Zion. And that's what the people were remembering. That's what they were singing about. That's what they continued to remind themselves about. They knew they had to go through the valley of Baca. They knew they had to go through the dry and desert place. They knew they had to do things to make it through, to strengthen themselves along the way. What are you doing today to strengthen yourself? What are you doing today? Because we're looking at the end of this in the next several weeks or a month. We're looking to come out of this. But what are you doing today to make sure that you're stronger so that when we come out of this, that you're going to be stronger in your faith? I hope that you're doing things that are, that are feeding your soul, that are growing your faith, that are helping you understand God's will and purpose even in the midst of this season. So a couple of things uh, I want to just kind of leave you as a takeaway. Um, to get to Zion, we must go through Baca, right? To get through Zion, we must go through Baca. To get to the mountaintop, we got to go through the valley. And so as we get to the mountaintop, and we understand we have to walk through the valley to get there. It's, it helps us on that journey to reach where God has us going. Baca represents, to me, here's another takeaway. Baca to me represents that a good experience can come out of a bad season. That a good experience can come out of a bad season. Now, we don't have, we don't have good seasons all the time, right? I mean, we, matter of fact, I mean, good seasons are... It sometimes are long in between those good seasons, and we go through bad season after bad season. But because of our perspective, our perspective is right, we can understand that good things are happening even in the midst of the challenging seasons of life. And I think that's something that we need to kind of remind ourselves. This is exactly why they were singing these songs of ascent to remind them that this wasn't the destination, this is the journey through. And so something good is coming out of this. I'm getting stronger as we go. But this isn't where the destination is. This is only a stop on the way. And then the last thing I want to pull out is growth happens in Baca, right? Growth happens in Baca, in the Valley of Weeping, in the Valley 
of lamentation. This is where we grow in our faith. Absolutely. And so that's something that, you know, as we think about why, why James said you can have joy in your trials, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. But to understand this psalm, this song of ascent, it ties directly into that truth. We can have joy in the midst of the trials, right? And as we go through the midst of the trials, we go through the trials, we understand it's growing our faith. There's something good that's coming out of it. And so, a couple questions. Are you growing? Are you growing in this season of Baca? Are you keeping your eyes on the mission? On the destination that God has for you? Are you focusing on the negative of all the stuff that's going on? Turn off the news. Turn off the TV. You don't need to know another thing about how many people have coronavirus or how many people have died. You don't need to know that. What you need to know is what God's vision, vision and plan is for your life. And trust Him that He's taking you out of this season. I'm not saying don't be cavalier about it. Know what's going on. Protect yourself, but don't focus on it. Don't, don't allow that to be so controlling and dominating that your life is controlled with fear and anxiety in the midst of, you know what? You're not going to make it out of Baca. You're not going to learn the lesson. You're not going to get strengthened in this. So what do you keep in your eyes on? And then are you problem solving while you're in Baca? Are you, or are you being part of the problem? Are you problem solving or being part of the problem? Are you growing? Is your faith strengthening? Is your trust building? Is your, are you being obedient in the midst of? And so those are some questions I want you to think about as we kind of wind down tonight. This uh, valley of weeping, this valley of Baca, it's amazing scripture. Go back, meditate on it. Uh, think about some of the things that are going on. Look up that song uh, that I told you about uh, from Elevation Worship called Sea of Victory. Sea of Victory. I think it's going to be a blessing to you tonight. So, honey, do you have anything you want to add to the uh, conversation? Because I know that I talk too much and don't let you say anything. So, No? Nothing? Okay. All right. Mom says solving. I don't know why mom said solving. That's kind of weird. Okay. So, uh, as we think, <laughs> love you, mom. So, uh, as we move on, uh, tomorrow night, well, tomorrow we have something really special for you. It's, it's a little bit different. Uh, we're not going to do two for Tuesday, but we are going to have an interview. And so, what we're going to do is we are going to look at, yeah, mom, I saw that you guys were re-quarantined. Can't explain it. I got to tell you, you got to move to Florida. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, as we look at uh, tomorrow, we're going to do a special interview with our church staff, our office staff, tomorrow during our office. Now, Jonathan, don't tell anybody, okay, because they don't know that. This is a surprise. We're going to do a Facebook Live during our staff meeting tomorrow, about 1030, quarter of 11. And we're just going to do a short face, uh, FaceTime and Facebook video uh, for that. So you'll have to go on there. We're not going to be together tomorrow at 7 like we normally are, but it will be on there. So go on there. I think you'll uh, find it uh, fun and interesting to hear from the church staff in this in this season. It'll be a short video as we spend our time together. Okay, so that'll be tomorrow. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock in the sanctuary. Can't wait to share the Word of God with you. Mark chapter 6. It's going to be a great time uh, in the Word on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Bible trivia, 7 o'clock. Right, so Bible trivia, I will give you the, look at Karen, she's doing all thumbs up for Bible trivia because you know, that's her favorite part of the week. So um, as we uh, get through the Wednesday night service, that's when I'll tell you what Thursday night's going to be about, okay? Give you a little about 24 hours to prepare, all right? Well, let me pray for you guys and then we will be on our way uh, so that you guys can, well, you guys can go and dig some wells, dig some wells in the valley, okay? Father, thank you for tonight and thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for all the things that you do to encourage us and to keep us motivated to continue following you on this journey. Father, we know we know that this journey is full of ups and downs, ends and outs. We know that this journey is full of valleys and mountaintop experiences. Father, we know that the mountaintops are great, they're amazing, they're awesome, and they're times of celebration, but we know that also that the valleys, the valleys that we go through have some very important lessons to be learned and to, to grow us up in our faith. Lord, we pray that this whole season that we've, we've gone through, it's been challenging. It's been different. It's been a unique experience that we've had to walk through. But Father, I pray. I pray that as we're coming out of this valley and that we can see what's next on the horizon, Father, that you would continue to encourage us and continue to propel us forward to accomplish the mission that you've called us to. Now, Lord, as we eat our desserts, bless them to our bodies, if that's even possible. But as we go our way tonight, Lord, I pray that you'll go before us. 
I pray that you'll open doors of opportunity for us to be an encouragement to the people around us. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. God bless you. I'm going to uh, dig into my lemon dessert. Okay. So as we go Amen, into... Amen, Karen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How's it? <laughs> is that one good? Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is the low, low, low carb one, right? This is a low carb snack. I'm just, I think it is actually. Except for the graham some, pecker. Is that a Weight Watchers one or was the Rice Krispies? That's probably the Weight Watcher one. Or the, I'm telling you what, this is not the Weight Rice Watcher Krispies. one. Yeah. yeah it's not. Love you guys.